Being an owner operator is lucrative. Um, <clears throat> there, there, it, it's true. It's lucrative, but only if you're doing it the right way. The first key to success is getting your CDL license. If you're new out of school, fresh, and you just started driving a truck, the last thing you want to do is talk about leasing. You need to be getting some experience. You need to be getting hitting the ground running, learning how to operate the truck, learning time management, learning how to move in the world of trucking. Yeah, companies gonna say, well, you could come lease on with us and in six months, you could become a lease driver. Well, guess what? If you become a lease driver in six months, a lot of leases from mega carriers are the leases that they have with the companies that they lease their trucks from. So when you decide to take a lease purchase out, you are actually not buying the truck from the company, but you're taking on their bills. Truck payment insurance, Qualcomm, whatever type of communication devices they have, prepads, easy pads, whatever they have, all of those fees become yours. And it's a weekly basis. And if you go, just say you go lease a brand new 2023 model truck, you know, if they paying $700 per week for that truck, that $700 become yours. Then you got fuel that have to come out of that truck. You got all these expenses that have to come out every week. Okay, just say you hire on with a company. They say, oh, we give you 55 cents a mile. So they come back and say, well, if you come lease the truck, then we'll give you a dollar twenty cent a mile plus the fuel surcharge. But what you fail to understand is you say, oh man, that's a big bump up in pay. I can go do that. I can run, go home when I want to, do what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. That's not the case. Number one, that payment going to come out every week regardless. Number two, if you don't know how to fuel a truck and you every time you go to the pump and you fill up, Though you're getting a discount, there's still money coming out of your pocket. So if you do the math a dollar and twenty cent a mile plus the fear surcharge or whatever have you, which is basically the pay that a lot of them are paying these days, and you run three thousand miles, do the math. By the time you get through with deductions and payments and all of that stuff, guess what? You back at square one. Then they're gonna be taking our maintenance account. Three cent, five cent a mile. So that's money coming out of your payment, your pay every week. Then they're gonna be taking out escrow, a hundred dollars a week. You know, whatever they escrow fund is a week. That's money coming out of your check. So that dollar and twenty cent a mile plus the fuel surcharge, it equals out to what you making to drive their truck. If you want to be successful and being an operator, the best thing to do is get your experience up first. Most insurance companies, they'll deal with you with the minimum of two years of experience. Next thing, learn how to save money. Put your money up. You're making a decent amount of money a week. You can put up 25 to 50% of your payments that you make every Friday depending on your bills at home. Cause I know some people have families, you know, but if you young and single and, 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 you know, even if you are married, whatever the case is, put your money up towards buying your truck. Hard work and dedication will make you feel better about being an owner operator than going through some type of crappy lease deal. Now, are there good companies out there to lease with? Of course. Um, it's a couple of tanker companies that's good to lease on to. You can actually buy your truck, but they have cheaper trucks. But even in that, you know, um, you'll still have maintenance. There's a couple of flatbed carriers where a guy's been successful. And there are some drive van carriers. Like I know a lot of people, they go to Snyder Finance. Snyder Finance is not bad, but their trucks are too expensive. They're overcharging for those trucks because... They have to make the revenue to pay the truck off and make their money back. So they're charging double the price for those trucks. Yeah, you can take it to where you want to take it to, but you got to be an approved carrier and all of that stuff. The best thing to do is go to the dealership. How do you do that? Get your credit up. 
While you driving that truck your first year, start working on your credit. You know, get your credit report pulled. See what you owe. Pay it off. Then, your second year driving, you could be putting money back towards your down payment. You know, um, some finance companies, they'll finance you. You know, the interest rate will be a little high, but with good credit, your interest rates will be lower. So, that's something to think about. Do I have something against leasing? I kind of do because it's a false sense of being an owner-operator. Now, have some people sacrificed and finished their leases? Of course they have, but look at what they had to sacrifice. How much equity was in the truck when it was done? You know, that's the stuff. And then that's another thing. Yeah, with leasing a truck, you will have the perks of using their shop. But they still charge you per hour to use the shop. They still give you a bill. It won't be as much, but you'll still have a bill. Yes, if something warranted on the truck, of course, they'll send it to the shop. It'll get fixed. But think about this. There's a lot of downtime and getting trucks repaired. See, I'm an owner-operator. I've been driving 16 years. I'm an owner-operator. I own my own truck. I bought my truck outright. What was the best scenario for me? Because when things got tough, you know, I could still manage or park it. But that, that's going to be in another. That's going to be another video. This is going to be a five-part series. By the way, like, comment, and subscribe if you like the content. Share it. The best advice I'm trying to give is this. If you want to make it, it takes hard work and dedication. It takes saving and being disciplined because once you become an operator, listen, you got to be disciplined. You can't make five grand a week and not put nothing back in your business. You're going out here buying stuff, being extravagant, and then soon something happens to the truck, boom. You down, you down bad. It don't work like that. Being an operator, it can be tough. Yeah, it's lucrative. That's the, that's the side that we all hear about, the lucrative side of it. But we don't hear about the troubling side. We don't hear about the times where that truck could get in the bed with you if your finances ain't in order. But in this five-part series that I give you guys, I will be explaining this, but mainly today we're touching on the leasing aspect of being an owner operator. You have companies like Tail and a couple of more companies out there that lease trucks to guys and you can get it on with your approved carrier. But remember, in doing that, that is an, that is an expensive, expensive, expensive trend because a lot of times people can't pay for them trucks. They have poor maintenance on those trucks. They turn them back in. They get patched up. They get put back on the market. They get leased and leased and leased and leased and leased and leased and leased. If you buy a truck or purchase a truck, you want some maintenance history on that truck. You know, you want to know what this truck lifespan has been like. Again, I say, and some people may feel different about this video. Some people, oh, I made it off leasing. Okay, fine. Maybe you did, but come in under the bottom and tell your sacrifices of leasing that truck, what you had to sacrifice. If you want to be successful in business, the best thing to do is listen to someone that's going to be honest with you. There's been a lot of YouTube channels about guys talking about leasing trucks and all this stuff, and a lot of that stuff done faded out. Because they, they've gotten the, the gist of it. They understand it now. So if you're a company driver, drive their truck, make your money, save your money, fix your credit, do what needs to be done to put yourself in position so that you are able to buy that truck. And if you choose to lease a truck, hey, you're a grown man, you're a grown woman, do that. But if you're going to lease a truck, give yourself one year to save your money, learn the company that you're leasing from, because guess what's going to happen? The running lane's gonna change. 
Sometimes you may have loads going two or 300 miles. Sometimes you're going to have issues. Sometimes you're going to have issues with fleet managers. And even dealing with these companies that have the quote-unquote load boards. Even in that, there's still that stagnation of figuring out how to do this. Learn the business. Practice with their truck. Don't, don't go out there buying no truck from them. Practice with their truck. Learn how to make routes. Learn how to plan. Because when you become an owner operator, guess what? You have to know how to get there and get to the next load. That's how you make your money. Things change. So I'm here to tell you guys, if you want to be successful in trucking, especially on the operator side, learn the business that you're doing. Don't just get in it because somebody else said it's good. Don't just get in it because, you know, you think that, oh, I can get this done in a year. I can get this done in two years. Trucking don't work like that. It's a process. It is a process. I've leased from several different companies. And I'm gonna be honest with you. They were all one in the same. They had great strategies on how they how they make money. But when I got into the lease program, it was some of the worst decisions I ever made. I wasn't successful until I bought my own truck because then I was able to control the narrative. But when you're leasing, you get tired of that company, they piss you off, you can't take that truck with you. And if you with somebody like Tail or somebody, which they have contracts with the companies that they're leasing to, you got to spend so much money to take that truck somewhere, six, seven thousand dollars and you still making them weekly payments. Listen. Be smart. Learn the business. And if you're going to lease a truck, lease it. But I'm here to tell you, it's not cookies and ice cream. It's not what you think it is. Lastly, before I close this video, if you have any questions, um, you can reach me by email at russell11248 at gmail.com. I respond to all my emails. You can reach me any day of the week if you have any questions. Um, you can comment below on the channel and give me your information. And I'll reach out to you personally. Um, I don't want to too much get my number out, but that's why I say I'll reach out to you personally because there's a lot of information that I could give you. Like I say, I'm 16 years in the game and it ain't much I haven't been through with trucking. You know, I just want you guys and gals to be successful in this business, you know. I want you guys and gals to be able to enjoy family, be lucrative, and have a life, and not let this truck be your life. Because when you start leasing, you still can't go home. You still got to run two or three weeks just to make a decent paycheck. They make it sound good. Trust me, they're going to make it sound real good. But there's a dark side to it. Am I bashing it? No. But I'm being honest because I want to see y'all make it. I want to see everybody make it. Success comes in here. Knowledge brings success. And if you have knowledge and someone that's willing to help you get knowledge, then I'm here. One call, that's all. So, on the next one, 
we'll be talking about the the, the uh, pros and cons. And I'll be giving a more detailed view of what I mean between leasing and buying a truck. So until you until uh, until next time you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me how you like the video. Peace.